Today on the newscast, Israel is planning something big to the north as Iran and Hezbollah continue to push. Get all the breaking details next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. A very difficult weekend in Lebanon. You may have seen the images, a complete blackout in that country on Saturday, 24 hours straight with no power uh, due to an ongoing fuel shortage. Now, we've been telling you here on the newscast over the past few months that Lebanon is a complete disaster. I'm sad to say that, but the country is really devolving into complete chaos. The economy is a shambles, of course. Look back to August 2020, that massive explosion at the port of Beirut, which really just hastened what was already a major economic downturn in that country. Also, political instability and chaos. And of course, Hezbollah, a state within a state, controlling southern Lebanon with an iron fist and answering to their master in Tehran the Iranian regime. My continued concern about the situation in Lebanon is that the country could descend once again into civil war and complete anarchy and that Hezbollah and Iran will fill the vacuum there, will project power and leadership and attempt to exercise even more influence at Israel's northern border. Folks, keep the people of Lebanon uh, in your prayer. What an awful situation there for the civilians, of course, affected by a rolling, not even a rolling blackout. This was a complete blackout for over 24 hours over the weekend. We hope that doesn't happen again. You have the fuel shortages, of course. We've reported here in the newscast that the Iranian regime is shipping fuel through Hezbollah to Lebanon again saying to the people of Lebanon, we are your saviors. That's the message the Iranian regime and Hezbollah are attempting to send a very dangerous situation. So it's no surprise that this week, tomorrow, Tuesday, and also Wednesday, October 12th and 13th, Israel will be conducting in northern Israel in the upper Galilee region near the Israel-Lebanon border, Hezbollah country there in southern Lebanon, Israel will be conducting a rocket preparedness drill where civilians, anyone working in the Upper Galilee, will literally have to go to bomb shelters, run to bomb shelters, and simulate a rocket attack coming from Lebanon. This is the situation, folks. This is how precarious it is to Israel's north right now. So for two days straight, uh, the bomb shelters will be filled with people running in and again, when you're facing a foe to your north that is equipped with at least 150,000 rockets and missiles in the form of Hezbollah pointed at every inch of Israel, then certainly you need to conduct such drills on a fairly regular basis, and Israel continues to prepare for that coming great northern war where it will be forced to face off against the Iranian regime and Hezbollah and their various allies to the north in Syria and in Lebanon. Along those lines, again, more major news from the north. Today, Monday, October 11th, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett gave what I consider a major speech focused on the Golan Heights. Now, one of my favorite regions in all of Israel, a beautiful, lush, mountainous region that borders Syria, of course, and Prime Minister Bennett made very clear that the Iranian regime seeks to establish what he called an army on Israel's border with Syria along the Golan Heights. Now, for the past several years, Iran has been hell-bent on establishing a beachhead on the Golan from which it can launch attacks against Israel. What the Iranian regime wants to do is duplicate the situation that they have created through Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, perched at Israel's border and armed to the teeth. Israel says, no way, we will not allow you to do that. And Prime Minister Bennett reiterated that fact today. He said, we're not going to accept this situation in Syria. Very clear, that's the main reason. Over the past few years, Israel has carried out repeated airstrikes against Iranian and Hezbollah assets inside Syria as they continue to not only try to build that army 
along the Golan Heights in Iran and Hezbollah I'm speaking of, but also to bring advanced weaponry at to Israel's doorstep in the form of those precision guided missiles or PGMs. They do exactly what their name says. They hit the target with precision and accuracy. So Bennett was very forceful today in laying down the gauntlet to Iran and saying, we're not going to allow you to do this in the Golan Heights. To that end, he shared some more interesting information. Israel is looking to build up the Golan Heights, a very wise move in my view. I was in the Golan not too long ago and speaking to community and regional leaders there, they said the same thing. They said, we need to build this region up. It's a great place to raise, fa uh, raise a family, fresh air, a beautiful, lush place, as I mentioned. So now Bennett said, hey, in the next several weeks, he expects the Israeli government to approve a plan. And I want to read straight from my phone here the facts that he uh, shared today. Bennett said that the government is expected to approve a plan, a national plan for the Golan that will include investment in development, infrastructure, business, and renewable energy. And he said, we're looking to complete the plan that will change the face of the Golan Heights. Hey, exciting, cutting edge, uh, forward looking stuff here. Uh, to build up the Golan Heights, I believe it's long overdue, not only for the strategic value, of course. Look, it's the Golan border, Syria, to the north, and the various threats. Israel needs to have a strong buffer there, of course. But again, a family-friendly, beautiful place, and also a place, and Bennett mentioned this as well in his speech, where there has been a Jewish presence dating back over 2,000 years. And I love what he said. He made the point that, look, yes, it is wise to establish a larger presence in the Golan Heights, just because, for many reasons, economic, strategic, security. But at the end of the day, he said, our presence, Israel's presence in the Golan, is not related to Syria and what's going on there. We've had a presence in the Golan for millennia, was the point he made. This is part, the Golan Heights is part of our ancestral homeland. It's part of the land of Israel dating back to the Old Testament and the times of the Bible. This was part, the Golan Heights, of the promised land. Very important point there. Now, President Trump acknowledged in 2019 uh, Israeli sovereignty over the Golan, which was a big deal, but the rest of the world has been slow to get on board and acknowledge that this is Israeli territory. And as Bennett said today, we're not giving it up and we're not going anywhere. So I thought it'd be interesting today as we're talking about Israel's historic presence in the Golan, not only the current events there, but going back over 2,000 years, a little while back, I paid a visit to an ancient synagogue in the Golan Heights, dating back to the first century AD, around the time of Jesus. In the Golan Heights, it was actually remodeled, and I guess you would say rebuilt to a degree, by Israeli archaeologists. A fascinating place that shows, yes, the Golan is indeed a part of Israel, and it always has been. Take a look. Eric, let's go inside. Lots to see. Let's take a look. I can't wait. I've heard so much about this place, Yaakov, and now I am here. Let's see history in our own eyes. Yes. Wow. Unbelievable. And so well preserved and restored. Yep, yep. Just amazing. And look at this. Right. This is probably the highlight. This is the highlight. I would say, um, you know, when the first uh, archaeologist came to this site, uh, we're talking about the late 1800s. Yeah. And then along the years, people kept on coming. There was a big argument. Is this a Jewish place or not? And we're now standing in the synagogue. And you know, a synagogue in Hebrew is Bet Knesset, which means the house of gathering. This is the heart of the community. This is where everyone meets, uh, you know, three times a day, of course, in the weekend. Uh, so this is really the heart of the village. And two main things uh, prove to us that this is a synagogue. One, the direction of the prayer. 
-hmm. Okay, we're now standing towards Jerusalem. Yes. And the second thing, this is the Torah Ark. We have here menorahs on it. We see different Jewish symbols. Clearly Jewish. So you, so you understand this is Jewish. Yeah. Now, just understand, this was a pile of stone. And uh, some several, I would say, crazy archaeologists said there's something here. They put little chips in every stone on the pile, and they were able to create a 3D image of where each piece goes. What this place looked like 1,500 years ago when it was destroyed by an earthquake and the Jews have, had to leave this village. And wow. here we are, uh, you know, uh, 20 years after they began. Yeah. We're standing here. This is what it looked, almost what it looked like yeah. 1,500 years ago. And, you know, we're standing here. And for me, it's always very moving uh, to stand here as, you know, a Jew, as a Golan resident. And yeah. I understand I'm standing here. You know, we have bar mitzvah celebrations here. We have weddings here. Right. We, every group I have here, we, we come to pray here. And you're standing praying in front of the arch, and you know, yeah. your forefathers were praying here just thousands of years ago. Yeah, Yaakov, that's amazing. What's also incredible is that where we are standing inside right now, not too long ago, this was rubble. This and was to be restored bit by bit, block by block, pillar by pillar is just amazing. Give us a little bit more information uh, on the uh, relevance and significance uh, of the Ark and what happened here with the Torah in this section of the synagogue. So, first of all, what you just said, I think, is maybe the essence of Israel. You have history and you have innovation, right? A very yeah. vibrant, innovative uh, culture, and it comes together here. The innovation is what is able to create the restoration of this place. Yeah. Um, when you pray in a synagogue, so the synagogues, uh, you know, back then were the whole community would sit around mm -hmm. so they can see each other. It's a little bit different than uh, what we see in some of the synagogues, different traditions today. But this is where the Torah scrolls were. Wow. And twice a week, and then on Sabbath, you read from the Torah scrolls, the weekly portion. So everyone is praying towards this direction. Mm -hmm. This specific project wouldn't have happened if not for the personal support of the Prime Minister of Israel, who came yeah. here himself uh, for the day they reopened the synagogue. I told you he has a lot of uh, respect for the Goran. He has a very deep connection. Sure. Um, and, you know, thousands of visitors are coming here every month because, you know, you can touch history here. Yeah. And I'd like to just share with you one more important thing which personally sure. uh, inspires me. Let's talk about who restored this place. Yeah. One of the archaeologists, his name is Yeshu Dre. And he's a very famous archaeologist in Israel. But one thing people don't know about him is that he is one of the brave fighters of the 1973 Yom Kippur wow. War. He was there on the front line facing the mass Syrian attack, and he was there fighting with his uh, fellow paratroopers, and he comes back decades later, you know, to the land he protected and almost lost his life for, yeah. and he brings, you know, the Jewish life, uh, the Jewish history yeah. back to life here. Amazing. As you said, Yaakov, look, there were some fierce battles here on the Golan in 67 and 73. Wow, that is amazing. Hey, last question. Number one, can you just hammer the point home some more that there was always Jewish life here in the land of Israel. Yes, the temple was destroyed in AD 70. Uh, yes, after the Bar Kokhba revolt uh, in 130, 134, uh, the Jewish people were dispersed. But there was always a Jewish presence here over that 2,000 year period, even before 1948. Uh, you know, Jews always lived there. The question is where? You know, at certain times they couldn't live in Jerusalem, but we yeah. know that they were always here. And something that really uh, gives me inspiration is that, you know, the Jews were here along the years, but they weren't in control of the land. Yeah. And the land was deserted. And we know there are prophets that say that when the Jews come back to the land, uh, it would start blossoming. And you see how when the early Zionist pioneers start coming here, suddenly something's waking up here. And after centuries of there's nothing here, mm -hmm. suddenly the place is flourishing. Amazing stuff. And what a thrill to be inside that ancient synagogue dating back some 2,000 years. Now, if you like that clip, you'll love our Watchman TV show. That clip aired originally on our TV show, 30-minute weekly show on TBN. You could check it out Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern Time and Friday evenings at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time on TBN. We're bringing you a lot of on-the-ground material like you saw in that piece from the Golan Heights every week on the Watchman TV show. By the way, I will be heading back to Israel again very, very soon. Stay tuned. I was there in June 2021, a few months ago, and I've got some exciting stuff planned soon. I'll leave it at that. More details to come. Thanks so much for joining us today here on the Watchman Newscast. Until tomorrow, God bless you. And remember, 
never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.